Well, welcome everyone. This is our regional assembly, even post assembly activity, our Better Together Thursdays conversations. Uh, so grateful that workshops that were slated uh, to have taken place last Friday are still continuing, still happening. We talked about length of regional assemblies. Ours was 100 minutes, but if you add up all these workshops and these Zooms and these contents and discussions, I think we are several, several hours of, of great learning and sharing. That's part of this effort of being better together. And appropriately so, this is November and this is the week of the ministry. And Sarah Renfro wasn't uh, going to be present just for a workshop, but we had a whole practicum <laughs> on Thursday that uh, she was going to lead in. But we, we will reschedule that when we are able. But uh, so grateful that you're here to remind us of what are the gift the pension fund is, including help us celebrate ourselves and help our churches celebrate the wonderful ministry that takes place uh, throughout the Christian church, Disciples of Christ. And each of us might have our own different investments or retirement funds and all that with you, but generally uh, we are so grateful that Pension Fund is, is part of our general ministry, uh, working for all of us in so many ways, uh, more than just, uh, just investments and retirement funds. So uh, welcome, Sarah, and feel free to tell us more about yourself and kind of your uh, connection, what you, uh, what you contribute to the pension fund for you personally, and, and more about what uh, we would like to know. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so very much for the invitation. I'm glad to be with you all. Um, again, my name is Sarah, and I am an ordained disciples minister, went to Lexington Theological Seminary and served churches in Kentucky and I'm here in Indianapolis area and I served uh, Geist Christian Church here for three years before joining Pension Fund two years ago on October 29th. So it's coming up on my second anniversary and I couldn't um, be more pleased to serve with such a ministry. Pension Fund is absolutely a ministry as we've already talked about and, um, and we do celebrate uh, the clergy in our midst. And I am the area director for Kentucky, um, Mid-America, uh, Christian Church in Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, and the Upper Midwest region. So I've got about a 20 minute presentation and then we will have time for discussion afterwards. Does that sound good with all y'all? Good. All right. I'm gonna share my screen and do my best to do that. Okay, hopefully you see a big helping you on the road to financial wellness. Does everybody see that? Thumbs up, mm -hmm. nod, great. All right, so in this uh, presentation, we'll explore elements of compensation and how pension fund uh, is finding new ways to support clergy and church staff. We'll learn about new resources that can help answer your trust money questions and uh, so that you can find your path to financial wellness. Uh, at the end, we can have questions and answers. And there we go. So a pension fund, uh, as you probably know, serves employees and spouses of those serving in the Stone Campbell Restoration Movement, including churches, preschools, colleges, universities, seminaries, and benevolent care facilities. We have over 14,000 members and stored more than $3 billion in assets. And through our generous donors in 2019, we were able to give $1.6 million plus through our various ministerial relief and assistance programs. For over 125 years, our investment approach and consistent funding levels allow pension fund to remain strong even in times of uncertainty. We have a great team committed to helping you become retirement ready. With Pension Fund, enrollment is the only requirement for you to benefit from our expertise in managing your financial assets. Simple and easy. With nearly 60 employees, including eight area directors, many of whom are ministers or have served in the church, offer uniquely personalized service. In the history of Pension Fund, no participant has experienced a reduction in pension or pension credits nor suffered any loss in their account value due to poor market performance. While most people, people directly invested in the stock market lost half their account value twice in a decade, pension fund remains secure. 
We have long-term viability and integrity, and members are immediately vested in all our products. So the goal for our time together uh, today is to help you determine where you are on your financial journey and to help you identify the next step to progress on your road to financial wellness. One housekeeping item I do want to point out is our legal disclaimer. The material contained in this presentation is for informational purposes only. So please consult your attorney, tax preparer, or financial advisor before making any decisions on your financial matters. All right, there are four stages of financial wellness I'd like to click quickly go over. Surviving, driving, arriving, thriving. These come from our friend Pete the Planner, whom you may or may not have heard of. We'll talk more about him later and the partnership we have with Pete. Also keep in mind that as we talk about the financial stages and budgeting, we are talking about your household income and budgeting with the assumption that you have already accounted for your 10% tithing. Surviving. To move out of the surviving phase, you would need to be able to check off all four of these boxes. Credit card debt free, one month worth of household expenses saved, term life insurance purchased for 10 times your income, household budget maintained on a regular basis. If you are not yet able to check off all four of these boxes, you are in the surviving phase. Driving. You are considered to be in the driving phase if you can't check off all four boxes. Three months worth of household expenses saved, student loan debt free, will or trust documentation completed, retirement account contributions being made. You'll notice as you review each of these phases, you will be able to check off boxes in each phase. However, until you can fully check off all boxes in a stage, that is considered the financial wellness stage you are in. Arriving. People in the arriving phase have been able to check off all the boxes in surviving and driving and are now in the arriving phase. They are building their savings and preparing for retirement. You are in arriving if you are working on saving at least 20% of your take home pay in addition to retirement contributions, maximum retirement account contributions, and have no car payments. And finally, thriving is the last stage. People in thriving are in the final stages and prepared for retirement. They are working on charitable giving plan in place, home is paid off, retirement plan in place, fully funded and ready to pay out when necessary, and no need for earned income as passive income pays the bills. So now that we've reviewed the four stages, let's talk about what resonated you for you on the checklist. Uh, think about what indicators help you know if you're moving forward or backward on the road to financial wellness. Another way to meet your goals is to review the structure of your compensation and consider how you can maximize benefits offered by your employer. Church compensation packages typically uh, include three basic components, sorry about that, uh, cash compensation, benefits, and business expenses. Benefits may include retirement benefits through pension funds, such as pension plan dues or the tax deferred retirement account for a 3B. Other benefits include group health insurance or a health care stipend, time off for vacation, sick and parental leave, time for continuing education and sabbatical leave. We know through our partnership with Lilly and our Excellence in Ministry program that work-life balance is an important aspect of equipping pastors and church leaders to sustain themselves and lead a thriving ministry. It is important for the church to be aware that ministers are both church employees and self-employed. This is because ministers are church employees for income tax purposes but self-employed when it comes to Social Security and Medicare taxes. We encourage churches to provide a Social Security offset to their ministers because a minister is responsible for paying the entire 15.3% Social Security tax on their own. When a church provides this offset, you are helping pay your minister, minister's payroll tax 
as you do for other non-ministerial employees. If your church decides to pay the offset, it should be paid to the minister as part of cash compensation and as taxable. Let's talk a little bit about housing allowance. Ministers are eligible for a benefit in declaring a tax-free housing allowance to the IRS each year. They can request that up to 100% of their salary be designated as, by the church as housing allowance. The minister's housing designation must be recorded in the official church board minutes each year and designated in advance of paying the minister. It is the minister's responsibility to use the full amount claimed or pay taxes on any unused portion. While pension fund cannot provide tax advice, a great resource for exploring this topic further is our clergy tax guide, which you can find on our website. And I'm happy to give you the link to that after this. When considering tax cash compensation, it is important to understand factors such as cost of living based on the geographic area and the experience and earned degrees of the pastor. Be sure to budget for federal cost of living increase as well as annual merit performance increases. Now that we have discussed what is included in cash compensation and benefits and things to consider, let's review an example which illustrates how these items appear in your church budget. These are not intended as suggested amounts. Your church will need to determine appropriate figures for the staff. Notice the total cash compensation includes salary and housing. Benefits are listed separately from salary. Pension plan retirement benefits are based on 14% of total cash compensation. In this example, $8,400 equals 14% annual due. The final element to a church staff compensation is business or ministry related expenses. These expenses are separate from salary and benefits and are considered costs the church incurs in the course of performing its mission and ministry. We recommend that the church establish an accountable plan for reimbursing business expenses to the employee. Examples of these expenses can include work-related mileage, cell phone expenses, and continuing education expenses. After looking at the church budget, let's discuss the structure of your personal savings. An important part of the planning for the future and finding yourself on solid ground in times of crisis is addressing your savings plan. Financial professionals suggest that your emergency savings contain one to three months of expenses to get started. Short-term savings can include goals you have for the immediate future, for example, planning for your spending in lieu of relying on credit cards to make purchases. Long-term savings should be goals for the future, such as saving for paying off your mortgage or a child's college expenses. Investments would include your retirement savings account and preparing for a future where you may not wish to work full-time. One way to fund your savings goal is to set aside 10% of your income after tithes and offerings at the first of each month. At the end of the month, most people don't have anything left to save simply because nothing was set aside. Reducing how dependent you are on your income helps to prepare you for a successful retirement. When you review the three different types of savings, you may feel unsure of where to begin. In February of this year, Pension Fund expanded our partnership with Pete the Planner to bring your money line to members as a free service to help walk alongside them on the road to financial wellness. Your money line provides unlimited access to financial concierges and online tools to help members answer their toughest money questions including how to start prioritizing your savings. Your money line is offering a new course called Stability Academy. Stability helps you focus on small, easy steps that help you stabilize your current state and pave the way for a strong financial future. You can learn more about your money line and Stability Academy on our website. For an example, your money line helped a member who had paid off a uh, car loan and wondered what she should do with the extra money she had each month. Should she save it or pay down her student loan? 
Your Money Align walked her through her options and she was better prepared to make a decision. I'm guessing that most of you all are currently pension fund members. Uh, if after today you have decided that you would like to increase your retirement savings or start a benefit accumulation account for your emergency savings goals, I am here to help. These products support you on the road to financial wellness. Our products include both employer-sponsored and individual savings products. Employer-sponsored accounts are typically managed through your employer, while individual savings products can be set up independent of your employer, allowing you to further supplement your savings. Pension funds can help you maximize your opportunity to save by combining these products to help meet your financial goals. Think about what you can do to progress further down the road and toward a successful retirement. Members often choose to consolidate retirement savings accounts to simplify account management or to prepare for retirement. Rolling over or transferring existing accounts from other providers allows members to rest easy, knowing that their retirement savings are with a strong, smart, secure provider. Pension fund assumes the downside risk and members share in the upside with good experience credits. Members and their spouses are eligible to participate in rollovers and transfers. If you'd like to learn more, obviously contact me and I'll be sure to follow up. Lastly, as we celebrate 125 years of supporting ministry, we want to take a moment to highlight the ways pension fund has been helping ministers bridge the unexpected. Pension Fund has continually evolved as we look for ways to support pastors and the church on the road to financial wellness. In 2016, we launched the Excellence in Ministry program to help equip newly called pastors to provide financial leadership in their churches. In 2019, we expanded our ministerial relief and assistance programs to provide support to a new generation of pastors with programs such as parental leave and new church gift pensions. These charitable programs are entirely funded through gifts from donors and the income from our endowment. Retirement funds are not used to fund ministerial relief and assistance. So we rely on support. In fact, 100% of pension fund employees contribute to ministerial relief and assistance because we believe in these programs and the impact it can have in the lives of pastors so they can lead healthy, thriving churches. To learn more about how you can donate or participate in these programs, please visit our website. And that concludes my presentation for um, this morning. I hope that I was able to help you assess where you are on the road to financial wellness, as well as identify some practical next steps to help you become financially well. As your dedicated area director, I'm available to answer your questions. So feel free to reach out to me by email or phone to schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, hopefully you can jot that down, otherwise I can give it to you in just a moment. Thanks so much. And I will stop sharing my screen. Stop share. There we go. All right, what questions can I answer? And of course, um, if you don't feel comfortable uh, asking anything here in person, uh, send me an email or, um, uh, or give me a, a call and we can talk uh, confidentially. Uh, yeah, I've got a question on, uh, and I've heard different things from different pastors, retirement and then you, you're receiving retirement and your ability to continue to work. How does that work? within the, the pension fund? When you retire, you have to leave your current place of, of pastoring or go to less than 50% of where you're currently serving. And then you begin to, you can begin to retake retirement. But then if you serve as an interim somewhere else or pulpit supply, then um, there is no, those, there are no limit on your income there you would just not be paying into the pension anymore. If you're already receiving your pension, then you could establish a tax deferred retirement account for a 3B 
um, as a supplemental savings. That is another option. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that, I think that's what I was asking. Okay. So you go to 50% of your base salary with your current location, then you're just considered half time. Is that right? Right. Okay. And up to what age can you still contribute to your TDRA and things like that? The, um, I believe you can continue to contribute. Uh, I, I don't know if there's an age limit on con contributions. I know you have to start taking required minimum distributions at age 72 is the new limit, but I can find out um, more specifically. for you. Sarah, uh, no comment, but uh, uh, no question, but a comment. Uh, I joined the pension fund in 1962 when I was a student at the College of the Bible, which in 1965 became Lexington Theological Seminary, which was the year I graduated, so my diploma says the College of the Bible, Lexington Theological Seminary. And throughout the years, I have been astounded by the performance of the pension fund. And in fact, one of my professors, Dr. Lester Palmer, became president of the pension fund for so many years. Uh, and so I, I'm just uh, affirming with gratitude uh, what the pension fund uh, has meant to uh, clergy over the years. Thank you for sharing. That is a wonderful story. And uh, as, a, as an LTS grad myself, uh, I appreciate that. And, um, and uh, pension fund has been around for obviously a long time and, and has done their very best to take care of their pastors. I'm part of the generation that uh, cannot retire for Social Security uh, compensation until 67, but I know I qualify for full pension fund at 65. Is there kind of a balance for people like me with uh, two different retirement dates and on what seems to be working and what might maximize benefits? I don't have a great answer for that. Um, yes, full, I mean, full age retirement for pension fund is 65. However, there is a late retirement bonus up to age 70. So okay. for, for every month after age 65, you will earn an extra 0.5% um, credits, pension credits until age 70. Okay. So um, depending on, on how long you can wait, not everybody can wait, and some people have to retire early, and you can retire as early as 60, but there is a, an early retirement um, penalty. Thank you. I, I saw the notice that we were to receive a um, good credit points. When does that go on? When is that listed? Is that done at the first of the year or is it in the record now? I believe they are applied. The special apportionment um, that was just awarded will be applied at the end of the year, I believe. Um, I know we pushed it back just to see how, um, how the market would do and uh, it did rebound um, so, so we all uh, get uh, some extra credits, or um, if you're already receiving your pension, then you got a raise, or you, you will get a raise. I know some of us were anticipating packing our bags last month to head to New Orleans to celebrate mm -hmm. the 125th anniversary. And, and it is what it is that we weren't able to do that. And we got masks and mugs, but any other ways that we could help pension fund celebrate, you know, that may be on the horizon for next year or 
or next five years or so? You know, I think that they are still considering their options. Um, you know, we just don't, with, uh, with General Assembly being canceled, um, all, you know, and we had to do that for so many different reasons. And I say we as the, as the big C church, not the pension fund, we didn't make that decision. But um, we just don't know. Um, and until we have some sort of idea that we're, you know, trending in a positive direction, then I don't know what we can do. So if you are on social media, wear the, wear the mask or tag, you know, tag pension fund, um, tell your story. Um, that's one way that you can um, help support us and get the word out. And if you have, um, if you know young clergy, make sure, I mean, I would encourage them to, um, to check us out and to, to, um, to be part of Pension Plan if they are not already. And if you know students who are studying to become ministers, um, make sure they are aware of our student gift program, which many of you have um, said that you were a part of. And um, we still offer that. It is free pension, um, for, for those who are going on into ministry. Mm -hmm. That's a great okay. reminder because some, some of us here are part of commissioning ministry teams mm -hmm. or regional commission on the order of ministry. I don't think we ever have offered that advice, at least in, at least with every candidate all the time. I remember yeah, I had a person who, my mentor, who said, you know, enroll now, even if you know, you're not making 20 cents a month, but that qualifies you to get disability insurance because it's one year after you enroll. So I've been p paying extra for the disability insurance, which mm -hmm. is better than I can get anything mm -hmm. or anywhere else. So uh, just thank you for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, our students, even though it is a free gift for students, they are, they are eligible for those death and disability benefits, which is excellent, especially for those with, with younger families. Um, and also dependent parents um, if there are no spouse or children. I, you know, I have one uh, praise, I guess, and then a, then a generalized question. Back when I was first in uh, my first pastorate, one of the pastors who had had a stroke uh, had come out for a, to do a funeral, to, for me to do a funeral for his, um, one of his relatives in Nebraska. And he had worked at a small church in um, central Illinois before the stroke, had not um, had the income to contribute much of anything to pension, but his only income was this little bit of social security and what um, uh, the pension fund was giving to him uh, in, in his need. And I, I really appreciate that. And so I really, it really pushed pastors to try to get in. It was just something that was um, hard to hard to see and really taught me a lesson too about trying to prepare for the future. My other question is more general is um, my wife has noticed a lot of uh, some people in the state taking go ahead and taking retirement in the midst of this. Have we seen that in ministry where some people just decide to go ahead and you know uh, go ahead and retire now as opposed to waiting another year or so? I haven't personally, um, I haven't seen an influx of those who are retiring. I do know that for those who are serving smaller churches um, or, you know, have their uh, offering has gone down um, their, and their salary has gone down they, and they are nearing retirement age and that is a possibility they are considering that. Um, I've also heard of churches where that are, are thriving in this time and, um, and offering seems to, to maintain and, and um, sustain, sustain um, the ministry and mission. So um, I don't know numbers, um, but I, I haven't seen a lot, but I have heard of a few. So that's not a great answer, but that's all I got. <laughs> I just um, am amazed, this is a bit more, another comment. I'm just amazed at how the pension fund has done so well in the midst of so many ups and downs in the, in the uh, financial markets. 
and um, I just sleep better at night <laughs> as, as a person who's retired and, and living on passive income. Um, I can't tell you how grateful I am that when so many people in this world and in this country are struggling financially, not knowing what to do uh, with paying their bills, um, I, those are worries I don't have. I can't say enough for the pension fund providing that kind of security uh, for people who are retired. I, it just amazes me. Yeah, our, our investment strategy, and we have two folks on staff, a chief investment officer and, uh, and a business analyst or, a mar or investment analyst. And then we work with managers throughout the country and they do a remarkable job of taking care of um, our assets and um, at the end, uh, we always try to have, maintain a um, reserves and all of our account balances and, and the pension plan itself, we wanna make sure that our funding level is well above 100%. At the end of 2019, we were 127% funded. So that is how we have been able to weather the, um, the roller coaster that has been 2020. That's just amazing. That is, that is amazing. Um, I've got a retirement from Yellow Freight, and they're only about 70% funded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and pensions that make the news, it's usually not good news. <laughs> Are there any other questions or good news to share <laughs> Thanksgiving. I will say that, oh, sorry, Don, go ahead. Oh, no, it's, well, it's just, uh, no, I mean, it's, the pension fund has been good news so consistently, and we, I mean, all of us, I think, feel this and see it, and, and also, I can say that I do know of some that ended up having some illnesses and so forth, and the pension fund did some incredible things as they went through those experiences. So there's that side too on it. I had just, it just I don't, uh, you'd said that there this might be this good experience credit at the, at the end of the year. Is that something that would go on this year's taxes or next year's taxes, or is that something we just need to wait and see, which is, I just wondered about that, yeah. Yeah, at this point, I think that's a wait and see. Uh, okay. Our board does look at it um, each, uh, you know, once a year, but uh, each quarter we kind of assess, our board assesses where we are in our reserves. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I as, we, as we see people that are going into ministry, and like all of us, you know, we need to be aware and to be directing them to the pension fund, you know, to, to get their help. And that's something I don't know is, we think enough about. We ought to. We need to because of the great value. So thanks again. Thanks again. Thank everyone. Okay. Thank Sarah, you I'd, so much. Yes. I would like to ask about if you could give us a little more information about the 13th check. For all of those who um, are receiving a supplemental pension, meaning that um, their pension payment is, um, is, is lower than, um, than two times their income is less than two times the poverty level, and um, um, and then there's those whose pension are just not very much. That is usually collected, as you know, at, at General Assembly. We take a, an offering, a collection, um, so that in December, all of those who are receiving the supplemental pension um, or gift pension um, can receive an extra check. Um, is it and, is it doing the job? Is it is it being able to cover those those needs? We get a lot of Thanksgiving from those who receive the thirteenth check. Uh, I you know I don't know what if that is going to pay bills or if it's going to buy Christmas presents or um, or you know any number of of ways that it could be used. But we do receive uh, a lot of note cards thanking us for that. Are you getting a lot of uh, donations uh, for that? We are doing our best to, to ask um, since we didn't have, since, you know, we, we are doing things virtually and we're sending out letters and, um, and hopefully you got the, the last bridge that had all of the different ways that you can contribute. Um, I think that we're, 
I think we're doing all right, but we can always use more. Um, sometimes I, I believe, I, I don't want to speak completely out of term, but I'm thinking that almost sometimes the 13th check can be nor larger than um, what they receive monthly. But, um, but I'm sure that doesn't always, uh, that's not always the case. Thank you. Uh, I uh, appreciated receiving the bridge recently, and and I read it uh, very carefully and with deep appreciation. In part for, because of the listing of uh, people who are now deceased, you know, many of whom I I knew. Uh, n now that we don't receive a monthly uh, paper. Uh, uh, newsletter. Uh, I have missed that sort of information. How do I access that? Do I just go to the website month monthly or, or how is that information shared? That is a good question. I, I will have to, you know, I know that our bridge is only, you know, sent out um, a few times a year now. So, I, and as far as I know, that type of information, those who have um, who are um, those who have died in the last year are not, or in the last month, are not listed on our website. So I will have to find out if there's a, a good way for you to get that information. Okay, thank you. There are any other questions or comments? <laughs> yeah, with uh, regional assembly, you know, being canceled, you know, we won't be physically there to write a check <laughs> like we do, and and we realize that's the same thing through all disciples mission fund giving with our special offerings. People aren't in the pew to use the special envelopes to give checks, so it's just you know, just general encouragement to listen to those pleas that are there to, or to look for them and to help make up for uh, these difficult times of not being present, but yet wanting to, wanting to give. So thank you for asking about the 13th check is one of those offerings we look forward to at assembly. And uh, I appreciate everybody being on board today. So this is recorded and we'll, we'll post it. So if you know someone who would have benefited from uh, this discussion, you can certainly uh, direct them to the link. And then also uh, Sarah participated in a webinar a couple weeks ago, and then we have that link and we'll, we'll offer both of those. So you can get complimentary information there together. But next week, our Better Together Thursdays is going to be at 7 p.m. It's geared toward lay people. Uh, so encourage those in your congregation. It's sponsored by uh, Phillips Seminary Ministry Training Program. And our emphasis is for lay education. So we know our commission ministers uh, value that program so much to give them education. But I know all of us know lay people in our church who just want more than, you know, the, the typical, you know, kind of dollar uh, in issue curriculum <laughs> that sometimes they find to have good concentrated education. So Leslie will be uh, sharing things that she would recommend. And then plus general questions about ministry training program as well that we might have and that's that's another incredible gift thanks to stewardship <laughs> 75 bucks a class for eight weeks who would have thunk so <laughs> thank you so much Sarah, uh, you, Sarah for being with us and uh, sorry we couldn't meet in person as we were planning last week but grateful for this and the information that you've shared well, thank you so much for this opportunity, and um, and I didn't go into depth on any of the, you know, about the pension plan or TDRA or IRAs or benefit accumulation accounts, but I'm always available to do so, and if you have, you know, different clergy meetings um, that you are doing virtually, um, I am happy to, to pop in and share more about that um, or just be there for questions and answers as well. Wonderful. So, Thanks, everybody, and enjoy this. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it, it's, a, it's a gift <laughs> here in uh, early October uh, for the, this weather and the season. So we'll take our blessings. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.